Over the 12 months to May, Mighton's UK Small Companies Fund returned almost 15%, more than double that of the FTSE 250 and the FTSE Small Cap Index. Joining me now to discuss the performance is Gervais Williams from Mighton Group. Gervais, thanks so much for coming in. So how has the UK Small Companies Fund been performing, say, since the start of the year? What's been interesting is that the market's been quite volatile since the beginning of the year and we've seen a bit of a sell-off not just in the UK but around the world and what's been interesting is actually many of the small companies particularly micro cap companies whilst they've come back a little bit have actually bounced up quite nicely and so actually that's produced quite good returns in spite of uncertainties in the market. So your fund has been outperforming the FTSE All Shares Index, the FTSE AIM All Shares Index, FTSE Small Cap Index, the FTSE 250 Index. What's been driving the alpha? I think what's been particularly important over the last few uh, years and of course the last few months as well is obviously individual stock selection. There are individual companies which are able to hopefully take advantage of the uncertainty out there, add in terms of assets, buy some assets and drive some uh, premium returns on the back of that. So a lot of the small caps have really been outperforming some of the larger stocks since the Brexit referendum. Are small businesses affected differently by Brexit uncertainty? Yes, I mean after Brexit what was initially a key effect was actually we saw a pick up in terms of the largest companies, the devaluation of sterling was a big factor which drove the FTSE 100. But what we've seen is, uh, after that is actually, if anything, world growth had a good year last year but it's come off the top a bit recently, there's worries about protectionism now and what we've seen pretty much over the last two years since the referendum is actually small companies in the UK continuing to outperform because they've got individual prospects which aren't so dependent on the world economy. So do you think the small caps are more insulated from some of those global uncertainties like trade wars or exchange rates that you pointed to? Yes, I mean they're not necessarily entirely insulated. Many of these companies are small companies but they have international operations, they deal in other overseas currencies, they might well be affected by protectionism in certain ways. But others hopefully are not just going to ma manage to survive but actually might thrive going forward. They're small and agile and it's that small and agile aspect which hopefully gives them the chance of outperforming at a time when other companies perhaps are not uh, moving as fast. I imagine they're very much a function of the underlying growth picture in the UK and last week we saw that revision to UK GDP slightly higher. I'm wondering what your outlook is on the UK economy. I mean what's been interesting is since the uh, referendum we've actually seen the UK moving from probably being one of the better growing uh, OECD countries to being one of the worst. There is still some growth out there but we have got worries, you know, consumers are in a pretty difficult time at the moment, there may be a consumer recession around the corner, we've got uh, interest rates going up, we've got uncertainties about Brexit and we've still got a hung government of course which mean, may mean that there may be political change coming up. So there's a lot of uncertainty out there but what is interesting is in the UK we've got an AIM market which means that actually many of the very smallest quota companies are are available to us to invest and that's just not the same pattern as you see in the rest of the world. So as it stands it's sort of 50-50 about whether we get a rate hike in August and I'm wondering whether you think that could act as a tailwind this rising rate environment for the small cap sector. Yes, I mean, if anything, interest rates may slow the economy a tiny bit. I think the interest rate rises are so small, I don't think that's going to be a significant feature. What is true of many of the small quoted companies is they have quite strong balance sheets. Some of them have net cash balances on their balance sheets. And therefore, in a kind of theoretical way, if interest rates go up, they might make a little bit more on, on just on their cash balances. So even despite these uncertainties from, you know, Brexit or rising rates, lots of different things going on, over the last week in particular, we've seen a number of IPOs on the AIM market. And I'm wondering why you think that these uh, companies are still so willing and able to tap the, the markets to get cash. I think what's been interesting over recent 12 months is, if anything, I think we've seen people beginning to try and push up their active share. What that really means in real terms is people are taking money out of the mid and large cap stocks and putting it in, into AIM stocks. And that's meant that there's actually quite a lot of uh, cash around for good companies coming into the market. So we've seen some IPOs coming to market, many of which have actually gone off to very nice premiums. So one of the um, recent IPOs that you're interested in has been Amigo. This is a subprime lender. Why is that one of your stock picks? I imagine that's quite a cyclical business. There's a bit a lot of talk about whether we're approaching the, the height of the bull market. Yes, I mean the interesting thing about this particular company of course is it uses guarantors and so if you have actually got uh, to borrow money, if you can't necessarily go to the banks because you haven't got a particularly good credit history or, or you, you ha you know, you've got quite a lot of other debt, then in fact you can use a guarantor and they've got a, a fantastically well organised business. They get very, very high scores from Trustpilot which means their us users give them very, very high marks for actually customer service and they tend to lend relatively small amounts of money between 500 and up to five or 10,000 for one to five years and, and they've got fantastic uh, uh, service levels. So you said in your notes that there are numerous small and micro cap stocks standing at subnormal valuations. Could you give us a hint of what some of those might be? 
So Amino might be a good example of that. This company is about 150 million market cap. Uh, it's actually uh, having slightly slower sales in the first half because the timing of its sales is coming more in the second half. It's grown its order book by 40% recently, but it's still only on about 13 and a half times, dropping to 12 and a half times next year. It's got a, a, a nice yield as well. Cash in the balance sheet of 11 million in cash in the balance sheet. In our view, very much overlooked just because of the timing of the first half and second half profits. And sector-wise, what are you looking towards? I think the area which is very interesting at the moment is often oil stocks. The oil price has come up quite a long way. I think actually it may stay higher for longer because as you've seen, stock piles of oil have actually been falling in the States over recent weeks. And that implies that even though Saudi Arabia are picking up in terms of oil uh, production, they're actually not necessarily ma making up for the loss of production from places like Venezuela and Iran. So we think many of the oil companies are actually looking quite interesting at the moment. So you don't think we're approaching peak oil? Uh, I think there may be an issue with peak oil in terms of, uh, you know, I think there's less production coming through over the last three years. Many of the largest oil companies have actually cut back on their uh, production uh, uh, plans. And in that regard, actually, you, you know, what's interesting is actually we're probably running a bit short of energy uh, compared with all this new, uh, new energy coming on stream. We still need, actually, oil uh, and gas to run our cars. And in terms of dividends, what are some of your top income plays at the moment? Well, I mean, if you go to the, the, the energy sector, I mean, one of our favourites there is, is Diversified Gas and Oil. It's a, a US uh, a invested company listed in the UK. What's been interesting about this is it's been in the conventional gas plays, uh, making acquisitions from distressed sellers who have unfortunately gone bust when the oil price came down. So they've been making them on very low valuations, getting great cash paybacks and driving an incredibly good yield. So it's just completed another transaction, raised another $250 million on its already $500 million uh, market cap. But most particularly, Particularly, you know, its income is probably moving up from about six and a half p, possibly to eight, nine, even ten p, uh, at an issue price of ninety eight pence. Lovely stuff. <laughs> so I want to take a step back now from the micro level and get your sort of view on the markets. Obviously, the first quarter was categorised by these wild swings, a lot of volatility. Then the second quarter, the FTSE one hundred saw its best three year, three month performance in fifteen years. Yeah. So where do we go next? Are we approaching the end of the bull market? I think most of us assume we are at the late stages of the bull market, but as we know with bull markets, what's interesting is sometimes they can go very much more spiky upwards before mm. they peak out. So we just don't know. There is quite a lot of cash on the sidelines, so markets could surprise and still could still uh, push on uh, through 7,500 to 8,000, who's to say? Uh, on the other hand, we've got to be a bit wary about risk. So I think it's a, p a question of really being very sure-footed about our stock selection to make sure that, yes, we fully participate in any rise in the market, but most particularly, we don't get too caught out if there's a, set, a setback in due course. So it's all about stock selection, essentially? Yes, absolutely. And many of the companies which you're, you're investing in, away from the mainstream, are actually companies which are overlooked. And because they're overlooked, hopefully, there's more ability for them to actually continue to drive returns, even at a time, perhaps, when markets themselves aren't producing great uh, performance. Jamez, thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much. That was Gervais Williams from Mighton Group. Thanks so much for watching IGTV. I'm Victoria Scholar and we'll see you very soon. Subscribe to IG for educational content, company insight, financial analysis and expert commentary.